obviously we've had a lot of changes in financing over the last, I don't know, it just seems like every week there's a change in financing, whether it's interest rate or dealer fee or this term going away, this interest interest rate going away, whatever. But um, uh, so we've had a lot of training over the last few weeks. Uh, we've been back and forth with Jay for probably the past three, four weeks or so, trying to lock him down, um, trying to get our schedules to line up. And thankfully, he has time tonight to spend time with us and kind of go over Sonova and go over the, the pros and go over the changes that are coming and that have came. And uh, so I'm very excited to have him on. And so, uh, Jay, go ahead and take it away, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate that. Um, and thank you, everybody, for um, having me be here. Uh, this is kind of, I, I just recently uh, took over power as my uh, account here with Sonova. And so, you know, I know a lot of us have kind of maybe been in communication already. First and foremost, just thank you for your patience with us as we try to really make this a, a more streamlined process. Um, you know, a little bit of a background on me. I came from Sunrun uh, in sales myself came from, uh, you know, lead generation and Costco's and Home Depot's trying to, you know, hey, have you ever thought about solar? Have you ever thought about solar? Kind of doing that whole thing, worked my way up to uh, eventually national inside sales. And um, and now I'm here in Sonova, but I only mention that uh, because I get it. As a sales rep, you if you're in the moment, you need a proposal right away, you're with a customer. Um, sometimes there's some hangups. Uh, and I just want to get it out there. We are addressing those things. And uh, again, trying to make this a little bit more of a, a simplified process for you guys. Uh, but today I figured I kind of wanted to go really in depth and maybe even create a, uh, uh, you know, a test lead with you guys to kind of show you how uh, to navigate through the platform. Uh, but I think what I want to do is kind of start with the basics and just a refresher. Why Sonova? I know that we are your only PPA and lease option right now. Um, I did have a meeting with a few higher ups earlier today. Um, and really, Sonova just wasn't presented to its reps in a way that I think everyone was able to grasp what is really possible here. There's a huge opportunity for growth and originations. Power is a huge force, a huge power to be reckoned with, right? And uh, and we noticed that I noticed that, and I think that uh, if we're able to kind of somehow link and get on the same page, um, we could just be another tool, right, for you guys, another weapon in your arsenal. Um, so let's start with the basics real quick. I'm going to share my screen here, uh, and then we can hop into it. Alrighty, so. Uh, all of these slides I'm gonna go through, you guys do have access to this stuff. It's in the Sonova Resource Hub. Um, I will provide a link um, to Anthony and kind of links to all this stuff. Maybe you can push that out to everyone. Uh, but you guys will have access to this stuff um, to kind of reference and go back. But um, let's kind of go through it. So this slide right here if you guys are on computers if you can take a screenshot of this or if you want to take a picture with your phone um, i'd recommend it this is going to be kind of your resource page right who's who to reach out to and for what um, as your account manager i'm here for proposal issues pricing you've been locked out of your account uh, you know really any basic questions i'm here to definitely assist and i can kind of direct but if you have questions about a project block, uh, you know, uh, title verification was rejected, something like that, then if I can't get to you right away, it would be best to let's be resourceful and utilize the dealer support line. Uh, we've focused a lot of our attention on developing a support staff for our account managers to handle accounts like Power, right, where there's a ton of uh, support that's needed and just one person, it wouldn't be efficient, right, or effective. So I would highly recommend utilizing uh, our dealer support line, dealer support at Sonova.com. Um, any credit validation, uh, if you need to validate the contract, the validation line is here too, customer care as well. If you have existing, uh, you know, in-service uh, projects that need assistance for whatever reason. Uh, so I would definitely uh, utilize this. I have this, you know, kind of just on my desktop ready to go. Um, we can skip through that. So 
Sonova's been around for a while. I'm not going to give you all the hoorah stuff. It's it all comes down to the basics, right? Let's let's talk about why are we here? We're here to make an impact on the environment and make an impact on our wallet. And uh, Sonova, at the end of the day, offers the best coverage for your customers, and we're offering you, the dealers and the reps, the best possible rates. Our dealer rates have increased, uh, you know, periodically throughout the year, uh, only to keep up with market increase as well. Uh, and even with those increases, we're still we're still the best in the market. So, you know, why you want to look at Sonova is one. I think we can all agree the shift from just where the market is right now. There's going to be a shift from loans to uh, PPAs and leases, and you know, there's multiple factors, uh, increasing you know, interest rates, uh, whatever the case may be. I think that there is a trend and the numbers can prove this, that you know, PPAs and leases are kind of where the direction that this market is heading. Being your only PPA and lease provider, uh, I think it's in everyone's best interest on this call, uh, including myself, that we, we nail this down and we iron out all the details with everyone. Uh, so, yeah, I, again, I'm going to spare us kind of a lot of the, uh, all, a lot of this kind of filler stuff, and it comes down to we are providing the best coverage and we have the best rates uh, for you guys moving forward. Um, we are operating in 44 different states, uh, so on and so forth. Excuse me as I kind of zoom through this. Uh, we do offer a few different uh, products within our portfolio. I think a common misconception is that we are a finance company like Mosaic or uh, you know any of the other big dogs, um, which in a sense is true. Uh, we are a service provider, really, because you know in terms of picking up that customer from where you guys you know close a sale and it transitions into a Sonova account, uh, you know we we are there to service that account for the duration of that agreement. Um, we're in charge of taking care of all of the you know, maintenance and whatever it is that we need to do for these particular systems. So um, let's get into kind of some of the products. Um, well, let's talk about our guarantee here real quick. So we do have, again, the longest coverage in the, in the market right now, 25 years. Uh, coming from Sunrun, I think a few of their products were 20 years. Uh, so again, longest coverage there, system monitoring, uh, system diagnosis, corrective maintenance and liability management. It's on our insurance policy uh, when it's a lease or a PPA, uh, extensive system coverage. And uh, I think energy guarantee was something that was mentioned uh, earlier uh, in the call by Anthony. Yeah, no other company is guaranteeing energy, uh, the production for 25 years. Uh, and these are huge selling points, I believe, for your customers. This is something that they can really have faith in. They know that the company is gonna be behind them throughout the duration of their agreement, not just for the first third half or whatever it might be, right? Um, now, we offer essentially three different options, a couple of more, we'll break them down here. This is just the solar options, right? So the easy uh, plan is our equipment lease. It's a flat rate. You're essentially paying for the equipment, right? It's exactly what it says, balance billing. There's no upfront uh, payment option. And the energy energy guarantee is there. And of course we do insure this product. Now um, with Sunrun, uh, I can relate their product um, more closely to the PPA EZ. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in a second here. Now, the easy plan, the PPA here is you paying for the power that the system produces, of course. Um, it's a locked in low kilowatt rate, so on and so forth. Any questions so far? I don't want to like spend too much time on, on something. Everyone okay so far? Real, real quick, Jay. Um, I, I see it noted right there, but if you wanted to confirm, I think we had a question maybe a week or two ago in regards to a customer getting a PPA release and qualifying for the SREX. And so myself and a few others on the call, we did say uh, no, but it was kind of like a 90, 95% sure it was a no, but if you wanted to kind of confirm, you know, yeah, there's local so, rebates or whatever. So any rebates or SREX or TREX or whatever, um, typically only applies when we're talking about a loan. Um, so any lease or PPA agreement, um, typically it's not a part of the conversation. 
So you would be right. It's it's a no. Jay, on that previous screen, you some said ten years. What's ten years? So the ten year is the roof penetration warranty, um, which is industry standard. Uh, you know, you could upgrade to typically longer coverages with some other companies, but ten years is kind of industry standard. And I think we can all agree. If there is an issue with install or anything that might pertain to the roof leaks or whatever, usually that's going to happen before 10 years, right? But um, so we stick to the industry standard on roof penetration. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, and by the way, side note, I also have Augie Guerrero with us. Uh, he was uh, the account manager for Power prior to me. Um, and so, you know, if he has any input, Augie, if you're on, feel free to chime in or, you know, anything like that. Um, okay, we I'm already talked about- parent this. watching you do well, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Um, okay, we also offer storage, right? Battery options, um, a lot of the same thing. Easy, uh, flat rate, or you could pay for, you know, obviously what the system produces, or you can own the system outright. Um, again, I just, even when I was selling uh, for Sunrun, I only ever really sold leases. Uh, you know, it was very rare that I sold a loan. So, uh, you know, I, again, I think that this is going to be a huge asset, uh, assuming we could all, you know, really get this under, uh, under our thumb, right? So uh, what are we looking for when we're qualifying a home um, for, you know, our, uh, for our underwriting uh, overview? You got to pass credit. It's got to be a residential home. The signer's got to be on the title, and then we have our contract validation. Pretty standard for you know across the board, right? Uh, most companies are going to be asking for these things. Um, credit score is usually a 650 or higher. We are uh, rolling out a um, uh, it's called our enhanced credit program, where we're able to potentially offer solutions to homeowners with less than ideal credit. Um, and uh, I know that. That's something that not a lot of people are going to offer. So any are any of your sub 650 credit scores, uh, you know, that they really want to do it. They just don't have the credit. Uh, we might have a solution for them here moving into Q1. Um, no bankruptcies for the last seven years, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Pretty basic stuff there. Um, we don't look at any debt to income requirements. When we do a credit uh, uh, pull, it is a soft pull. Um, if it's a loan after 30 days, it will become a hard pull. So just want to be, uh, you know, be sure you're setting the right expectations there. Um, basic stuff, what's allowed? Uh, let's talk about what's not allowed. No commercial properties, no multifamily housing units over four units, um, investment and rental properties, kind of a gray area. If you have questions about this in particular, let me know. Uh, but typically that's not allowed. Um, obviously, farm, agricultural, anything else. Your what you would assume would be approved are what is probably correct: single-family home, duplex, triplex, so on and so forth. Um, no worries if it's in a trust, uh, estates, things like that. S corps, we can handle that. Um, it's just anything that's government, a co-op, a nonprofit, any of those particular um, uh, you know identifiers, then it, it wouldn't. So let's talk about how we get a deal from beginning to end. You're with a customer, uh, you're generating a quote, and this is maybe where we can spend a little bit more time in uh, on another call. We're doing a, uh, we're going to do a master class with you guys here soon at some point, I'm sure too. Um, but usually you'd be in solo, you would select Sonova as your, uh, uh, you know, as the product and so on and so forth. And ideally about 50, 60% of the time, it works, no problem. You're able to generate that all through Powers platform through Solo, no issues. Uh, but as some of you, many of you probably are aware, it doesn't always happen like that. Uh, so while we're in contract stage, what happens? I'm getting an error. Solo is not allowing me to generate a proposal. What you want to do is you want to generate that proposal in Solo as cash, right? Uh, and it's going to uh, give you all the details the uh you know the panels the inverter the azimuth the tilt the shades all of that right it's going to give you all of those details we're going to go into our sonova portal 
and we're going to manually enter this information so that we can generate a proposal in Sonova on the fly. It's, it's not an ideal workaround. It's not the smoothest process, but it is the quickest uh, workaround and really the only workaround that we have right now. So if you get an issue in solo generating this lead or generating a proposal, again, do it as cash, log into the Sonova portal, and we're gonna create the lead. Uh, we're gonna enter all of the lead information. It's very step-by-step. -step. It's gonna walk you through it, which utility, you know, annual usage, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're gonna create your design, uh, which will essentially you're gonna be transferring all of the details from the cash proposal on Solo over to the Sonova project, Tilt, Azimuth, et cetera. Then you're gonna generate your quote. I know I'm kind of going through this. I don't have any, I'm not showing you anything here, uh, but I'm just kind of outlining essentially that process, right? Once you have that, that proposal signed within the Sonova hub, um, then we can kind of, and you have the, uh, the utility bill, all of that is uploaded through your power platform. We can move that from contract stage over to, uh, to the next stage, NTP. Um, once that uh, uh, utility bill is uploaded and verified, it's gonna move to the next stage. Um, I don't know if it's showing me the flow here correctly from where I'm at. Give me one second. Uh, but essentially it goes into substantial and that's where most of the bulk of the work is being completed. That's where most of your deals are gonna spend uh, all of their time in is in substantial. All the way up until we can get the CP, the commissioning package and the FDNA. Um, I know I just went through a lot of information. Any questions right now? I have a, a couple, kind of back a few slides. So you br you brought up the different products, obviously the loan, the PPA, PPA Z lease, all that. So yeah. if we wanted to do solar and battery, yeah, what what products should we choose for solar and battery? Well, it again, it really is. It kind of falls into the three umbrellas, right? Or is it going to be a uh, a purchase? Is it going to be a lease? Is it going to be a PPA? Um, and so those three options are available, whether it's just a solar system or solar in a bath. Does okay. that answer your question? Yeah, so curveball, and we run into these rarely, but it happens, right? But solar, battery, and roof, is there an option for that? There is, yep, absolutely. So um, you know, we are able to uh, add, essentially their loan add-ons. Uh, so MPUs, main panel upgrades, uh, roofing, tree trimming, um, EV chargers, uh, those are all options that you can add on to that proposal. Um, obviously, it, it, I mean, I don't know if you're able to add that in solo. We, we don't use solo, so I, I can't speak to that too much. Uh, but those options are available in uh, the Sonova Hub for you, for you to add. Okay, and then is there a price per watt cap uh, on either, either of the products? So the the flat price, the flat cap is seven dollars per uh, kilowatt. Augie, can you confirm that? Yeah, seven, excuse seven bucks. But when you do a loan, you got to remember there's dealer fees attached. So it's after dealer uh, fees. So there's going to be the gap there. Your guys' power support does have that for you guys. We always give them the latest and greatest. So that's another obstacle that you guys can use to get that. <clears throat> but it won't affect uh, if you do the add-on for roof or MPU. Okay. It's basically a separate line. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Anything else so far? We're good. Hey, Anthony, just to just to get back off here. Um, yeah. my loan my loan for my house is roof, battery, and panels and stuff, and it's all Sonova. Right on. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's um, not something that a lot of uh, you know. I know at Sunrun we didn't offer that, right? So uh, definitely something to you know. It's a, another advantage or another talking point to your customers for sure. Hundred um, percent. Any other questions? Okay, so we talked about the various stages. Um, I'm just kind of looking at these slides here for a second. Give me one sec. Um, if there are timelines to these stages, right? Um, and if, for example, and, and it does depend on region, so I'm gonna try to broad stroke it here, um, but let's say, for example, uh, you haven't uploaded the utility bill 
Uh, I know in California, our uh, time frame is 60 days. Uh, it, in all honesty, I, I don't know why a rep would take 60 days to upload a utility bill. Um, that's something that I used to get right off the, I wouldn't even give you a proposal unless I had a bill. So, uh, but if for whatever reason it gets past that time frame, it will auto cancel the project. Um, and it's nothing to really be alarmed of. It's just letting you know, hey, you know, this hasn't been moving forward. You do have 30 days to rectify whatever that issue might be. Um, so, uh, you know, if it's uploading the utility bill, for example, uh, once it cancels, you still have 30 days to get that uploaded and it'll automatically kind of just get back into the flow of things. Um, I obviously am here to assist if you need any, you know, if there's any issues with you know, on Sonova's end, at least uploading these documents or there's project blocks that you thought you had cleared, you know, let us know and, and we're here to help whatever I can do to kind of get that moving forward, right? Um, so just getting you aware that there are auto cancellations. It's not me personally going in there, canceling things or whatever. It might be. Um, okay, so uh, there's a specific process. As a sales rep, you guys have to be Sonova verified, which I think pretty much everybody in here should be. Uh, but you, this is kind of walking you through that. Um, once you are verified, if you've taken your selfie and you've got your profile all set up, that's great. Um, because you're going to need that when you're doing the contract validation, um, online validation with the customer. Um, and that's kind of here. I'm not going to go through it step by step. Essentially, it's a part of the process. We need to get contract validation. Uh, it's just like a validation call um, where you would uh, would have called into a hotline and they talked to the homeowner, did so and so, you know, X, Y, and Z. I think we're all familiar. Um, there is an there is a way to do it online, which is right here, uh, online verification, uh, being able to log on to the MySonova app. These steps, um, again, this is all accessible in your hub. I'll be sure you guys get this too. That way you have it ready to go once you're uh, you know, at that, at that pro uh, part in the process. Um, and I think for this, we're good here. I can send QR codes here in a bit. I do want to talk a little bit about, I just have two other things here real quick, and then we'll kind of move forward. Um, here's the validation information. Is there any talk with Sonova and Power in regards to the warranty for penetrations to match what they're offering? or For the 10 year, you mean? um yeah so doesn't doesn't power offer like additional on top of that that they yeah, sell they have, they have an additional warranty for 30 years which let's say you coupled that with the sonova loan then it, it just yeah, yeah, yeah that's what that's what i thought when i used yeah. to have victoria said they had a additional warranty uh which is good so yeah. probably after 10 years it's a power issue if something happens not a Sonova issue thank you uh, this is going to highlight basically most of the stuff that we just talked about, you guys. Um, uh, Twenty-five year, uh, you know, guarantees and protections, uh, escalator options, um, eighty-five percent energy guarantee on the equipment lease. This is the PPAEZ that I was talking about earlier. Uh, now, ACH is required on this. You want to set that right expectation. They do get a ten percent discount per month. Uh, with exception for the first month, that first monthly payment will be uh, the total amount agreed upon. Um, and that first payment does begin on uh, the first payment date after interconnection. Okay. Um, keep moving. Any questions so far? You guys okay? Question. question. Well, I do see Lolita has her hand up. Um, so I don't know if she wanted to ask first. Sure. Yes. Um, sorry. I just wanted to go over what you said about putting it in cash and then therefore transferring it into your end. Could you possibly put that in writing just so I can, I've got it there? Visualize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do have that. I do have a template in writing for you. Um, okay. Uh, so I, I can definitely send that to you if you want to message me or your email if you want to reach out to me. Um, I, I can definitely send that to you. Um, sure. 
worries? Yeah, n- no worries there. Uh, yeah. I guess I can do, s- uh, give me one second. Let me see. I think I- like, because you have so many products that's available, it would be good to have some sort of template in a sense for us to, because we work every time on time whenever the customer wants. And we, you know, going through all the different products, it would be good to have some sort of template we can save on our computer and just go, okay, which product is best for our customer without having to call anyone on Thanksgiving and go, (laughs) "Um, someone please tell me. Yeah. So just say outside the square. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Um, We do have like a, you know, I kind of dub it as a cheat sheet. I think I've shared it with a few people in here. um, Mm -hmm. That'll kind of uh, bullet point the, you know, the main um, benefits of each product. Uh, Mm -hmm. Obviously, when you're talking with a lead, you want to fully commit to something. If you know, hey, I I think I'm going to sell this person on a lease. Yeah. um, Right. Then then we're going to commit to that. What I'm doing on the background, guys, give me one second. I'm trying to log in real quick to see if I can just walk you through PC2 real quick. Again, we do not use Solo. So it'd be difficult for me to kind of show you how to generate that proposal as cash in Solo. But um, I know it is fairly straightforward. I have seen it done. Um, just when you're choosing, you know, kind of the product and your different providers, you want to just choose cash, right? Um, give me one Maybe second. Maybe Anthony gonna... could do a hybrid. He he shows the solo side and then hops into your side on the back end. Got you. <laughs> so you want to send a solo link, you're saying? <laughs> well, so uh, so here I'm logged in as um, uh, Victoria here. Uh, she doesn't mind. Uh, this is what your Sonova homepage will look like, right? When you log into the hub, uh, you've, to summarize, you've already received an error in Solo, right? Let's say you've gone through the process, tried to generate this lead, whatever the error is, you received it. Okay, you generated it in cash. Uh, and now you have this cash Solo proposal ready to go on a different tab. You're going to log into Sonova. We're going to go into new lead. Uh, and essentially, we're going to do this step by step. Um, We're going to create that lead that you just did in solo in Sonova. Um, Let's say, for example, um, 14065 to my old address here. Uh, So this is not right. Let's just say I'll just drop it here for the sake of our conversation. you're only typically ever going to select solar system retrofit storage is, is not something that you guys would offer. Um, it's essentially a secondary system and only Sonova uh, can, can offer that. But uh, we're going to do a solar system here. We're verifying the address. Um, it didn't do it. One second. That is the house. Continue. I'm continuing without it. Test, test. What I just skipped over is usually when you're entering that address, it should auto populate that address like it just did. But um, I think I had to drop the pin, move it around. I, I kind of just need to get past that point here uh, for the sake of our conversation. So we've generated that lead. Um, we've dropped the pin on that address. Uh, now we're going to start entering all the information for this customer, right? Uh, this is a SoCal Edison customer, uh, typically time of use out here. Um, I always, so this is the estimated annual utility increase. I always do 2.9, it's actually higher than this, um, but Sonova is limiting it at 2.9% increases year over year. It's more like 6%. Uh, but obviously selecting 2.9 is going to help uh, uh, reflect better overall savings, right, on, uh, on this particular contract. Uh, their annual usage, let's say, is 10,000, um, so on and so forth. Any questions so far? Are you guys following along? Okay, so we've uh, created the lead, answered that person's information entered the energy usage. Now we need to create a design. Uh, Now, for power, 
you guys would select on provide my own design because again we are taking that information from solo typically uh what i've noticed with power is it's going to be a canadian solar 395 let's say there's just one array 10 units and don't take this to heart in phase unirac in phase to reiterate, Solo will give you these specifics. Obviously, I'm just you know selecting this. Um, 35, 180, 96 uh, solar availability. Uh, now, we talked a earlier about, OK, what about a roof? What about other things? Uh, we are able to add like system add-ons here. In this case, it would be a battery. Uh, but I'm not going to add that. I don't know why it's not. We'll just say I added it. This is good to mention for every one battery, you need to um, have four inverters. So to confirm, a, our 10 kilowatt end phase is three batteries. Correct. Right, so it'd be three by 12. That is correct. Yeah. And then 20 by whatever that is. <laughs> correct. Six by 24. Okay, we've created the lead. We've entered the uh, uh, utility info. We've created a design. Now we need to create a quote for this design, right? So here's the design. Now we go into the numbers. This is where you're going to find that information off. So let's say it's a battery lease, 25 years. Now, uh, in a lease or a PPA, because there are no Dealer fees in this, correct me if I'm wrong, Augie. EPC to dealer, dealer EPC right. to law. It's essentially the same thing. Let's say for uh, for example, you guys want to make three dollars and fifty cents per uh, per watt on this particular deal. Um I think your batteries, you guys have um, a specific price on your batteries. It's rounded to like 10k for right. If this is a three kilo, say like 10k. It's like nine and some change, but Sure, sure. It's about nine to 10, yeah. Okay. Uh, and we talked about non-system add-ons. This is what I was trying to show you earlier. This is where it is. Main panel upgrade, EV charger, roof, tree trimming. Uh, you guys charge a certain amount for these particular things. You would add it, enter that particular amount, right? Um, One thing, uh, most of us add that, uh, that uh, upgraded, uh, EPU or uh, the, the panel. Oh, okay. Make sure you add that. The because most of us add. I know Anthony does, and I do every time. Add that panel, the electrical panel upgrade. Oh, you do. So, okay. So our price per watt will probably have it yeah. already. Yeah. Main panel upgrade. So if, so if we do notate it, then we'd have to subtract that from our price per watt, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you is what I did is I went in and I added mine. I subtracted that one in solo. And then I put that in the dealer EPA, and then I added that on the the upgrade there. Because a lot of times you're you're a lot of times it would kick it out um, because if I add that in there, and it gives a lower per watt for your total wattage. But if you add it in there, it lowers it. So yeah, you're spot on. That's that's pretty much exactly what you need to do there. Um, so again, yeah, it takes a little bit of. Um, you know, a little bit more work to kind of get this done. And obviously this is not streamlined, uh, but it works. And um, I think that the benefit that the customer receives ultimately, you know, means that it's kind of worth the extra, uh, worth the extra work. So you uh, will occasionally get errors like this. So battery EPC of 2976 is above the max of 1300. Um, Augie, do you have any uh, input on, on the best approach to, you know, how you would go about that when you get an error like this because i can but just want to see what you guys say. you gotta lower the battery cost the battery cost and three dollars fifty cents it's gonna be over the cap right so three dollars this is where that playing around with things has it really comes into play i want to kind of just delete the battery right now for our conversation but we'll, we'll enter it <clears throat> Okay. 
That dealer EPC, EPC is also available on our solo when we put solo in. It gives you the exact number. Yeah, if, if you click on the top right, the hamburger button and click on pricing, it shows the full breakdown. So it'll show you 350, and, four bucks, whatever you're selling it at. And, and if we had something in front of us, it actually gives us the exact EPC for the battery as well, right? It separates the two. So let's say for example, it was $3.50 total EPC. $3 was just the PV, just the solar system. 50 cents was the battery. It, it'll break that down and give you the exact in solo. It'll give you the exact figures. So you're not always having to guess. Um, you can enter those numbers and usually it just, it'll kind of just process and run, right? Um, obviously we're getting through, we're going through some pickups because I'm just making up numbers here uh, in the moment, but it'll give you all that specific info. And then like for the azimuth and everything and all that. So on the, the, I guess you can say second page of the solo proposal where it shows system design mm -hmm. uh, underneath production, estimated yearly production says system details. If you click on that, it'll show a full breakdown of all the planes and the azimuths and the, right. the shading. You, it's just backwards, right? So it shows the percentage shading. So you just subtract it. It'll show 5% shading, 10% shading. So that's 90% shading in the Sonova portal. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, that is correct. Um, it's kind of backwards. So um, usually it's in the 90 to 100 percent. Right. Uh, so I did drop again, just for the sake of our conversation here, guys, uh, to reiterate, it will give you these specifics. And ideally, you're not getting an error. Uh, but if this dealer EPC per watt was three dollars uh, and uh, I just hit it at thirteen hundred for that cap, just so it would generate this next step. Um, essentially, it's giving us now, okay, this initial quote, what's going to break down everything, total EPC for this particular project, the monthly payment for the customer, year one savings, et cetera, et cetera. If this is what we want, then, okay, this I want to save this. Maybe we want to generate other quotes and kind of play with the numbers. But if ultimately this is a good quote, we're going to add to save list, and that does not save it. You want to scroll down to the bottom and save one quote. This is a key step that is probably the most missed step. Is like, you know, you'll log out and you go back, where's my quote? What happened? I swear I saved it. Usually we're missing that last, that last save quote step. All right. So now I have successfully uh, created a design. I've created a quote. Let's say, all right, let's let's talk with the customer. Let's Kind of let's see what they want to do. Cool, they're ready to go. Now I'm in the quote. It's going to break down everything here for us. This is where we're going to do credit validation. We're going to generate the proposal by clicking on that. I always like to download a copy for myself. It downloads to the computer. By clicking on email, it will push the proposal to the customer's email on file as a DocuSign. They'll go through it, they'll sign it, you'll get notified, and you're good to go. Um, now, the other option is uh, if you're with the customer in that moment, sorry, my son here needs his homework. Um, if you are uh, with the customer in the home, you can always click on review and sign contract and it'll take you through that process there. Um, you do not need to run credit to generate a proposal. Okay. So uh, I think that's going to help when there's, you know, customers that are a little iffy. I don't want you to run my credit but you still want to at least show them something, uh, you know, we don't require the credit validation to generate that proposal. So you should be good there. Um, and that's it. That's basically PC2, which is what this pl platform is called. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Any questions? Cool. Um, Jay, I got a question. You like like let's say that quote right there was 157 for a lease you you seem to like the lease what most of our sales i believe are are, are sales instead of leases what loans for sure yeah right but what is just kind of just kind of getting the idea of what what do you why do you think a lease is better than a loan well one interest rates um are increasing um, and two, just liability, right? Um, this is a lease is not on the homeowner's insurance, right? It's it's on Sonova's insurance plan. 
if anything goes wrong, any maintenance or repairs, uh, repairs that need to, you know, be done on the system, that's not anything that the customer needs to worry about in a lease. Whereas in a loan, you own that system, right? So. Yeah, um, but aren't you getting a warranty on that loan? Well, like Power has a 30 year complete coverage warranty. Sure. There are those warranties that are in, in uh, that are in place, but, uh, you know, overall, I think that when it's on Sonova's insurance policy, um, it really does remove, in a lease, it really does remove that, that liability factor on the homeowner. Um, there's a transfers guarantee. So if you're selling the home, it's going to transfer over to the new homeowner, no problem. Um, and you're not having to worry about your debt to income, having to make up that loan balance in the sale of the home. Uh, you know, that's kind of some points that I would mention when I was in sales. Uh, I get it. There are some customers that are just gung ho about ownership. And, I, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. I own my system. Uh, I just think that the market as a whole in the direction that this is going, you know, 1.9, 2.9%, uh, you know, annual increase on a lease versus a 6% loan, you know, mm. it, it just doesn't make sense. What about escalators? So we do have escalators. They are available uh, mm. 0 0.9, 1.9, and 2.9. Um, are there any specific questions about the escalators or? The, those are just increasing. So those increase the, annually by, you know, the respective percentage, right? So let's say 2.9%. Every year it's going to increase by 2.9. So let's just kind of talk about those real quick. So in a, let's say in a loan, uh, your payment uh, is 200 bucks. Um, you're in a loan. That's great. With a, uh, with an increaser on a lease at 2.9%, let's say your payment is 150 bucks. So it's lower than that 200, right? By the time it takes you to get to, but the amount of time that it takes for you to get to that $200 payment, it's typically about 12 years. So if you're talking to a homeowner that's not sure if they're going to be in the home, that's not their forever home, maybe they're going to sell it in 10, 5, 10 years, uh, then for me, it kind of only makes sense then to, let's get you the bulk of your savings up front with a 2.9 escalator, Right, get you that low payment at 150 year one, year two. It's only going to go up by a buck or two every single year. And you have the flexibility to sell the home without really being obliged or tied to the solar system, if that makes sense. Now, what about the tax incentives? That is the one kicker. Obviously, you don't qualify for the tax incentive in a lease or a PPA, right? Uh, but I think that most customers that are interested in a lease or a PPA, they really don't care about a tax incentive. I think that their mindset is more on how can I save money on my power, right? Um, but that is a great point. There are no tax incentives in a lease or a PPA. The tax incentives are really uh, beneficial to ownership as they can sure. do with they please and just be re-automatized at their loan rate. Some of your retired... Um customers that don't qualify for the tax incentives, you can go with the PPA. Correct. That's, not a, that's not great. A um, and, you know, not everyone puts that tax incentive. I think our statistic with Sonova mm -hmm. is maybe 3% of people actually apply that tax incentive towards the loan prior to reamortization, right? So not a lot of people are actually even putting that money towards the solar loan. They're just keeping it. So, you, you know, it's, it, it kind of, it, I, can, I, I recommend it, more weatherization and home upgrades for, for a better home. Yeah. Like why tie up 50, 60, a hundred thousand dollars in a loan for a solar system. Again, I get the benefits of ownership, but if you're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars on your home, I think that money is probably best spent elsewhere. Why tie yourself up? Let's put you, like, it's not affecting your debt to income. It's not on you as a debt, but you're saving. The, the end of the day, the conversation is about saving money on your utility, right? And I think you'll have more and more conversations with customers who, like, that's their focus. Um, and I think that's where leases and, and the increaser does does come, come in handy. Can I just recap? Was so you only offer loans to 
residential ownership, right? So not um, second homes or leased homes. Is that correct? So um, income properties, uh, for example, um, typically are uh, a no-go. Um, but, you know, again, again, correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, it, it's kind of circumstantial with that. Um, if the homeowner is on the title, you know, often sometimes they are on the utility as well. Yeah, because I'm thinking there are ways. you're offering the lease loan, wouldn't it be beneficial for a tenanted property if for the owner, I mean, especially now with rents going crazy, that's how I'm going to try and sell it to someone who owns a property and turn it into someone who's paying exorbitant rents to try and help the tenant out a little bit by getting solar. So if we can't sell a lease, I'm trying to sell a lease. Like your lease is the same as pretty much selling the, lo the loan to an owner who owns an investment property. So I don't understand why that product isn't available for people who own investment properties. Because so, we would have open a, a whole lot of, you know, people that sure. would be available that would want to put that on their properties if they can get a tax income or a tax credit with their so-called multiple properties and then also reduce their electricity bill by getting solar. But if we can't offer it because they're not living in it, then what's the point of a lease? If it's a lease is kind of like a tax deduction, as far as I'm concerned, that's how I look at it. I'm sure, you're, you're, it's a very valid point, 100%. And, and that's why I mentioned that is kind of a, a gray area. I've personally dealt with a few power reps that have had, you know, a duplex, for example. Uh, it's but neither the homeowner, the homeowner didn't live in neither pro, uh, you know, property or address. Um, and, and so there are, I guess, some exceptions to the rule, I would say. Um, I would just err on the side of caution with it. You know, I, we have multiple homeowners that own five, six properties and Sonova's on every single roof, right? So there are ways that we can help address those, those specifics, but just a general rule of thumb, uh, you know, because there's, there's, a few moving pieces there. You have to get the renters, um, you know, uh, not permission or their agreement in this as well, right? Because their name is so on the utility. It, you just add it to the lease. Correct. Like we we know how much the the income. We know how much the payment is a month. Right. They just pay the gas, right? I'm just. You're you're. Like the, you have um, the right selling point. You're 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 absolutely right. That is that. 100% accurate. You can totally and it's sell it's still a quarter or a third of what they're paying in electricity. And the right. homeowners, bonus, 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 adding equity 100%. into my home, adding, you know, I, then I know my tenants are going to be not paying ridiculous pg &E bills or whatever bills it is. So why can't we turn the lease section of it to be part of an investment for homeowners? So again, um, it's definitely something that we're, we, we can offer, you know, additional insight to whenever you come across that particular issue. Um, I wouldn't say it's an end all, like, hey, it's an investment property, they don't live in it, too bad. Um, well, that should be the differential between leasing and owning. So if you're gonna own it, then you're living in it. If you're leasing, then you're leasing it. I mean, it's not, well, so Sonova, Jay, so Sonova allows them to have multiple. Um, it's it's still a gray area because what happens a lot, and I've seen it multiple times being here and it was Sunrun too, because me and Jay used to work at Sunrun. You can't say like, oh, this is my investment property when you're doing the validation call. You go, no, I live here half the year and I live there here to half the year. I have two properties. The problem is a lot of people go, oh, this, I don't live here. It's an investment property. And then you're going to automatically get denied. Um, and you can't be any coach. So I hear my dog. She knows it's seven o'clock time to walk. She's like spot on seven o'clock will howl at me. Um, so that would be my best practice, but it's still a gray area, uh, which, which causes for, I would say, just the right coach and tell a customer, hey, you can get it. Uh, but here's what it is. When you talk to the validation, 
that's why I always recommend always doing online validation. It's gonna it's gonna help out a lot. And then to answer another question on lease versus owning, this is two kind of people. Like I buy my cars just because I put a lot of mileage. I would like to lease it. It's it's less upfront for me. It's less capital. It's it. I give it back when I'm done with it. But at the end of the day, like it depends on the customer, right? Some people are at least people like to lease their cars. Some people like to buy their cars. So it's not a one fit all, right? So you got to you're you're catering to the customer. You might have. 70% of people that like to buy it for the incentive. And then you're gonna have customers like me, look, I'm just trying to save money today, right? Cause I know I don't qualify cause not everybody gets a 30% back. Right. Uh, and Jay, to correct, you, correct your, your math, it's only 30% actually use that that money uh, to actually to pay down the loan. So you're actually, your, your, uh, your, your cost for the loan goes up, right? Cause month 18, now you're gonna pay 250 a month instead of that 150. Right. But if I'm a lease customer, I'm paying 150, baby, all day with the PPA easy. Right. Versus, OK, now I'm going up to 250 because I decided to keep this money. But again, it depends on the customer. I think the, the question on hand is being able to have a loan or a facility that's available for investors, not just homeowners. Because I have that all the time. And I can't offer them anything. Well, I don't know about that particular circumstance. I mean, obviously, there are all there are the other factors. They have to be on the title, so on and so forth, right? Um, I, I think that when we're dealing with that particular type of customer, it, it, it could go either way. If they're balling out of control, then they probably need those tax incentives. They're probably wanting to buy these systems, right, on every yeah. one of their of their properties. I have and someone that makes who sense. has six properties. What do right. I do? With but, but then there's the other side of that where there is the, you know, the investor that, um, you know, doesn't want to have their debt to income affected. They don't want, they, they can't take on another loan. They want to be able to stay flexible and liquid in a market if they need to buy or so, whatever. And the last thing they need to do is have a $60,000 loan on their, you know, on their, uh, on their record there. So you have those people that, you know, a lease is more than likely probably going to fit for them, right? So again, to build off what, what Augie just said, you got to kind of tailor the product to, to the homeowner. I'm not telling you that you can or can't do a certain thing when it comes to investment in real uh, and rental, pro uh, rental properties. All I'm saying is that if you do come across that circumstance, uh, you know, reach out, let me know, and, and we'll be sure that we can walk <coughs> that through the process accordingly, right? Thank you. Uh, no problem. Hey, Jay, so, Jay, so, so, so Jay, what you're, what you're basically telling me is if I got a vacation rental that's next to me, they live in the home one month out of the year. Basically, when I do that call, let you know that it's it's where they live and that's their permanent resident. They don't rent it. They don't do anything with it. They're in there one month out of the year. That's and no that's, one. That, yeah, that's no one business. That's no one's business. But there, yeah, you are you are correct. And and, and so okay, like, uh, okay, he'll be and, here next week. So <laughs> and look, uh, Avi mentioned and and I did touch on it on a slide earlier. The online verification. Let me see if I can find it. It's huge because you don't have to speak to someone in particular. It's just, it's super quick. They just enter the system ID number and answer a few questions, boom, 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 and it's done, right? So uh, instead, as opposed to having to call into somebody. Go ahead. So I got I got the answer. I've actually talked about Manny about this. Uh, so standards pretty much two houses that they would do alone, like, right? Because right, right, one would be a rental property, but they it's a summer home, I always like to call it. And I live like I'm a snowbird because I live in Wisconsin and I go to Palm Springs, Arizona three months out of the year. It's too cold. You can do a flex PPA. You have to pay for all of up front. So that investment person wants to buy all of them up front, the flex PPA. He can, as many, he can have as many systems as he wants. Got it. Remember, a flex PPA, it, 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 it's, it's, it's going to vary, right, based on the, the, the Size of the system, how much it produces, but that would be your your way. So as many as you want, Manny said. And in Manny, I trust. But that that's again, that's paying for this. Set. They have seven houses; they're going to pay fifty grand for each system. That's a lot up front. So I don't see a lot of people doing that, but you can. That's essentially the prepaid, correct, Augie? Correct. Yeah, they yeah. have to pay it up front. Obviously, with the flex PPA, it's it's a variable monthly bill, right? Depend on the usage and obviously how much it accumulates. And I know that sounds like a detractor, but um, that is the actual, that's the most savings um, that a customer will get, will get is by doing that upfront. So you know, there is that side to it. 
I, hey, I will Jim. say, oh, go ahead, Jim. Hey, Jay, um, just to verify the PPA and, and, and uh, leases, they still have to qualify 650? Uh, so yes and no. Uh, rule of thumb is about 650 or higher. Uh, but again, we do have, uh, we're rolling out an enhanced credit program. It's going to happen. Uh, it'll all happen automatically in the back room. If for whatever reason they don't qualify for our standard terms and rates, it'll automatically push to our enhanced credit program where we'll kind of reassess their situation and um, get them moving forward with solar at a higher rate, obviously, right? Um, nothing that you have to do, you'll just see that what they're available for and you'll be able to typically indicate those higher rates because like let's say for example 6.49 6.99 those aren't really something that you would see on a standard you know well qualified customer right those would be the only options that you would be able to select so you know okay cool this person had to go through enhanced credit um, but we're still able to offer them a solution uh, it's just over time obviously at a higher rate. so i'm really excited for that because i'm sure we all have a handful of customers that really wanted to do it they just couldn't pass credit so all right, thanks. Yep. Excellent. So um, uh, to kind of wrap things up and put a bow on it, um, the relationship between Power and Sonova, there's so much growth that can and needs to happen here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know sometimes things can be frustrating, uh, but I am here to help. Augie is here to help. Um, he's kind of my support. Uh, whatever I can do, you know, I appreciate your patience with me getting back to you and doing whatever I can to, to help facilitate, you know, this growth with you guys. Um, things that are coming up, you know, we are planning on doing a master class with Power, um, which should be pretty cool. I'm very excited about that. But prior to doing that, I want to have what's called Catalyst. It is our version of Solo, basically. It's our upgraded or updated version of PC2, which is what we just built a lead in. Um, it does use Aurora to help kind of build the design. So um, it, it's a really robust kind of all in one lead management generation, blah, 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 blah. Um, the reason why Power hasn't adopted this yet is just it, it's such a massive undertaking. Um, so many different uh, price points and rate plans and constantly needing to update them across 20 someone from power, how many states are you guys operating in? 24 different states? 24, 25. 24, 25, I know Puerto Rico, like you said, is coming up pretty soon. So um, I think like Catalyst is gonna definitely be something that will help to make this an efficient process. And I think that's gonna be coming here, um, hopefully within Q1, I'm working on it right now. Um, and this whole thing will be so much easier and um, we'll all laugh about this one day. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Yeah, great stuff. I appreciate your time, Jay and Augie. Uh, sure. Thank you guys so much for, for answering all the questions and, and doing this. Um, probably have to have you come back sometime after that launches as well. No doubt. Yeah, and, and I'm happy to do this again even before it launches and, you know, kind of uh, any questions or anything. You guys all have my contact info. Please utilize me as a resource. Sales support at power.com. Um, you guys have a great support team, uh, and those guys I work directly with on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and uh, they're just as good, if not better, than I. So, you know, if there's something that I'm not responding to or you need immediate attention, um, sales support at power.com, like, lean on those guys. They're a good group of people, um, and, I'm, and I'm happy to assist any, any time I can. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, so it's uh, 7, 12 Pacific time, went a little bit afterwards. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. And I thank you everyone yes. for chiming in. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Cool. Hey, Jay, Jay before yeah. you go, quick question. I can uh, hang on. Yeah. As, as a part of a lease, the system is owned by Sonova, correct? Correct. So homeowner has asphalt roof. Uh, ends up having roof leaking eight years into it. We'll just say 12 years because it's past the 10 years that you guys offer. Um, 
he wants to put a metal roof on and the flashing is no longer needed, but there needs to be an S5 bracket to put go on the metal roof. Metal roof. Uh-huh. Who, who, being your system, is he now responsible for that part of the system or how would that work? Well, uh, my initial, without, you know, kind of looking further, would be, yeah, he would be responsible. So. Let's say, for example, he's upgrading the roof to um, you know, whatever material. Um, well, he needs to take the panels down, right? So um, he would contact Sonova Customer Support for us to come out, uninstall the panels, um, store them, have them do the work on the roof, have us come out and reinstall. Um, that's well, coming out of the, the customer's pocket, right? They're going to have to cover that expense. Um, what, so, are, what are those expenses is from Sonova? Just curiosity, as yeah, far as an so, un- uninstall, reinstall. So uh, there are variables in this, but I, I know that the typical rule of thumb is about 170 bucks per panel, 150, okay. 170 per panel. Mm-hmm. But okay. uh, again, there are variables there. Um, but that's an out-of-pocket expense, and so if they're upgrading the roof and now we need new fasteners, whatever it might be. Um, again, my initial uh, thought would be, yeah, that's that's also something that that would be out of that that customer's you know pocket. All right, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Anything else from anyone? You guys all good? Good to go. Right on. Thanks so much, you guys. I appreciate your time. We'll do this awesome. again soon. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty, guys. Appreciate you guys. All right, bye bye. Have a good night.